The BCN Divine Triangle. Black Christian nationalism seeks to change society in order to accomplish the liberation of black people and realizes that we, as a people, are engaged in a struggle for power and for our very survival. We utilize the BCN Divine Triangle as a godly symbol to access and connect with the mystical powers that was in our ancestors and the cosmic energy and creative intelligence of the universe. We believe in the raging desire for freedom born of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the healing powers of the revolutionary BCN group process, which begins the liberation of black people by erasing 400 years of behavior modification. We believe in the transforming power of positive righteousness, where we as a people take a stand for righteousness over evil. We pledge to let the power of the divine triangle work its wonders in us. We pledge to take the power of the divine triangle to African people across the world. May God and the black nation be our witness. It is so hard, so difficult to find men who will stick to a purpose, who will maintain a principle for the worth of that principle, for the good of that purpose. And if there's a race that needs such men in the world today, God Almighty knows it is the race of which I am a member. Well, the race needs men of vision and ability, mm -hmm. men of character, and above all, men of honesty. That's right. And that is so hard to find. Yes. Amen. Carver goes on to say that billions of dollars have been lost to the Negro race in the last 50 years through disloyalty on the part of successful Negroes who have preferred to give away their fortunes to members of other races. My Lord. Rather than to bequeath them to the worthy institutions and movements of their own to help their own people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those who have chosen the hard road to true discipleship must have the highest level of commitment and are willing to undergo the greatest level of change. Well. We say it's out of the church, in fact, a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. yeah. Those who seek leadership inside of this church must have the clearest understanding of what total commitment entails. We use, there are six processes that lead to total commitment, to building a religious community with power. All must become a part of your very being if you are to be a true disciple. Mm. Right. Yeah. So the, the six processes are, we're dealing, today we're going to be dealing with investment. The processes are sacrifice, which we dealt with last week, investment, Renunciation, communion, mortification, and transcendence. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. These processes are not a religion. This is not our religion. But they are a lifestyle 
for the true believer. Mm -hmm. This is a lifestyle. This is a way of life. Mm -hmm. And they must be understand and applied daily. Right. All, right. All of these must be understood and applied daily. So we're saying, like, I want to recognize Michelle is a part of the Strive class also. A big part of what we do, there are some similarities in terms of the Strive class and the daily activities of a member of the Shrines of the Black Madonna. All, right. Right. All these spiritual disciplines we practice, practice, practice. We never graduate. We're always trying to become what God wants us to be. That's right. That's right. Now we start off this morning with a question. And the question is, can a man rob God? Yeah. Well, can a man uh, rob God? So I'm going to present that. Anybody, can a man rob God? Yeah. Have you ever cheated or stole something from God? Uh, <laughs> can a man rob God? Uh, my Lord. Somebody read up. Uh, everybody read the Bible. This is Bible class. You got to <laughs> All y'all cheat me today. Y'all write y'all Bible to the Bible class. <laughs> okay, so you're going to read Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Malachi 3. Malachi is right before you get to Matthew. It is the last book in the Old Testament. Last book in the Old Testament. Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Can a man rob God? Mm. Okay, Malachi 3, what now? Malachi 3, 6 through 12. I knew the money was going to get there first. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. I was at that month. Malachi all, all, all over now. 6 through 12. So the temple tithes. Huh? The temple tithes. Temple tithes. That's right. No, I, Yahweh, do not change. And you, sons of Jacob, you are not ruined yet. Yeah. Since the days of your ancestors, you have evaded my statutes and not observed them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahweh Sapo. <coughs> you say, how are we to return? Can a man cheat God? Yet you are cheating me. You ask how are, you, how are we cheating you? In the matter of tithes and dues. The curse lies on you because you, yes you, the whole nation, are cheating me. Bringing the full tithes and dues to the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and then see if I do not open the floodgates of heaven for you and pour out blessings for you in abundance. Mm -hmm. For your sake, I will lay a strict injunction on the locusts not to destroy the fruits of your soil, nor to make the vine in your field barren, mm -hmm. says Yahweh Sabbath. Right. All the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delights, says Yahweh mm -hmm. Thank Amen. you. Now, that particular scripture is dealing with tithes and offerings, and I'm not going to take, go back through the history of that. Today we want to expand that to more than just tithes that we pay for church. Right. That's a very popular scripture popular. When in, in, the, in the churches outside of here in terms of the ministers getting the church, the parishioners, to pay more money. Yeah. Obviously it's talking about reaping and sowing. The prosperity churches use it a lot. Right. Like if you give, like it's God is challenging. In Malachi, he's challenging the nation of Israel. Test me. See what I'll do for you. Build up my world. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all things will come unto you. So God's saying, invest into me. That's what we're dealing with today. Mm -hmm. Investing into God. All right. Now he goes on to say, everything belongs to God. That's right. For everything, absolutely everything, oh. above and below, visible and invisible, everything got started in God and finds its purpose in God. Oh, well. Man, you know what? I'm glad that God woke me up this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Lord. I'm glad that God is in charge. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, he's giving me a good hand. Let's give God a strong black hand. Right. 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 You know, I like God. Not just that I love God, I like God. God gives away a lot of free stuff. Right. right, free stuff, you know. <laughs> like, and, and you better benefit from it too. Let's we can thank God for all this free air we got. This right. Right. We, don't, right. we don't think about that, but all of this free, free air. Well, and we gotta remember now, the white man, well, he put a charge on everything. My Lord, right? mm. he put a charge on land. You put it so you pay for water. You got to pay. Sometimes if you're driving, I don't drive, but you got to pay to get from one city to the next city. Uh -huh. oh. And told. he just hasn't figured out how to put a charge on Ariel. He probably all of us. Now, God. God is everything. Amen. When you are sick and in pain, you call on God because you're not totally believing that the doctor's got the cure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know that God has all the power. Amen. That he has power, that God has power over life and death. When you lose a loved one, you pray to God for comfort, yeah. for peace, mm -hmm. for understanding. When we're lost and indecisive, we play for assurance and guidance. God is the source. God is loving, caring, and has all the power. Mm. Mm. Man. Mm. You know what? We don't even own our own bodies. Mm. God owns our own bodies. Think about this. I, I, was, I was looking this up last night. And I'll just touch on it a little bit. Think about the complex, this complex organic system that we live in. You know, we're spirit beings. Mm -hmm. So we can call this an earth soup. Which is run on systems. Our bodies are run on systems that we don't create, mm. or most of it really we don't understand. Mm. That's right. We got a circulatory <laughs> system, a digestive system, right. yeah. an excretory system. You know what that's for, right? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Get it out, yeah, our nervous out. system, <laughs> system that's 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 Neurons that take information from the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin to the brain. Mm, mm. So it's, it's okay to pray to God that God is in charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we need to pray over these things. Quick story. A number of years ago, I was going in the windows and going to the bathroom. Two ladies came out of the bathroom, out of the men's bathroom. You know, and I'm looking at what's really going on, you know. They're coming out of the bathroom and they're looking surprised. And then I see a gentleman come out of the bathroom as well. <laughs> right? You know, and it was the man's room. You know, I'm looking, okay. And when I went into the bathroom, what was going on, that these were two nurses, and this gentleman, I always forget the name of the bag that you have to wear. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. the stench of the bathroom blinded me. Right? I, I couldn't stay in there. It was, it was like, oh my God, wow. right? From that on, from that time on, I always, I'm thankful to God that my system works. Well, right? we, don't, we don't know what we have or, or, or could you be more grateful of all the things that God right. gives to us right. uh -huh. until we lose them, right? Uh -huh. We think it's money, property, mm -hmm. prestige, these things, yeah. but just the daily living, we should be thankful that God has given us this life. That's right. And everything works properly. <laughs> It goes on in your hand and it says, the universe is not the only domain of God's vast property. All here on earth belong to God as well. If all belongs to God, then comes the liability to commit robbery against God. Yeah, well. For it may be that there shall be no general habitual sense and acknowledgement of God's sovereign claims. I mean, you, are, are we sure that God is really in charge? When you think about that everything belongs to God and that God runs everything, mm -hmm. or we think it's just, uh, we take everything for granted. Well, mm -hmm. No feeling that all does so belong to God. This is the comprehensive spirit and principle of the wrong toward God. Right. And we'll go into many special forms. This state of mind is a general refusal to acknowledge God's law, 
-hmm. coming to a more particular account of what may be justly be called robbing God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We may say anything, we can say that anything that has a stronger power over us than God's will so that shall obtain for us what his will obtains not. Y'all follow with that, right? Yeah. yeah. Anything, what, what, <laughs> what stands above God's will? I, if I ask the question here, what's the most powerful source of energy, power, creative intelligence in the world? We would say God. Yet, how much time do we, what, what do we put over God? How much time do we stay in contact how, with this all-powerful God? Mm -hmm. His will or our will? Mm. Amen. How do we rob God? With our thoughts, dreams, imaginations. How often do we think about God on a daily basis? Or do we think about something more important than God? Mm. You ask, what could be more important than God? Whatever it is you think about most of the time. Mm -hmm. What is it you think about God most of the time? What is it that you think about most of the time? The time. Yeah. Bills. All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what about our desires? <laughs> what, what, what's the desire of your heart? What, you, what, what do we really desire? What do we really want? God or something more desirable? Sometimes it's a man. Is it a, is it a, a woman? <laughs> Money. 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 Property. Prestige. Right. Or just plain, my will be done. Mm -hmm. right. My will be done. Uh -oh. And you know, we're not going to just come out and say that, but <laughs> if we were to follow by our daily lives and somebody was to check out God's will versus your will, how would we stack up? Oh, yeah. uh, well, plain, come on, brother. In the theology of the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church, we believe that God is the infinite field of cosmic energy and creative intelligence. Well, out of which all things in the universe are created right. and within which all things exist. Well, mm -hmm. This theology is a rejection of the white western Christian anthropomorphic <coughs> conception of God well, as a finite super being existing separate from the created world somewhere up in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's right. well, you know, God is you know, he's got us on strings and we're like puppets. And why are you slaying me? Right? Yeah, like right, folks, right. you know. <laughs> generally, if you think about it, he's a white man with long white hair. Well. So, the BCN conception of God is pantheistic. Amen. We yeah. view in God exactly the same as in ancient African religion. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. A pervasive, intangible life force and intelligence permeating and surrounding all creation. Right. Well, God right, is the brother. source of right. everything. Everything. The invisible, the visible, the inanimate, material, everything. Our thoughts belong to God. Mm. Our dreams belong to God. Our ambitions belong to God. And this is a different way of thinking. Uh, well. But if God is the source of power, if not, it's something else. Uh -huh. well. well. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. In Acts 1728, we establish Pan African shrines of the Black Mountain. We say we live, move, and have our total being in God. So that's Acts 1728. That's so right. you don't think sometimes we're just making stuff up. But it's just coming directly out of the Bible. Well. Now we're talking this morning about investment. Investment is putting all we can in order to create security for the future. Well. We must invest time, skills, finances in the community in order that the community can yield at our moments of greatest need. Amen. So that's talking about what's inside the shrines of Black Madonna. That's talking about our church, but it extends to our neighborhoods and extends to the black community and the entire Pan-African world. Well, all right, all right, brother. Now... Part of this is also a return on investment, which is measuring tool investors use to show how well their investments in a particular company is faring and to help them make that important decision to sell stock or stick with it. So now we're, we're spiritually, mentally, emotionally, 
everything invested into our communities. It's not just one thing. We're not just going to talk about money right now. Mm. But we will talk about money as well. You know, we got to have money play. Mm. I put a definition there of the tithe. The tithe is the practice of giving a tenth of one's income or property as an offering to God. Mm -hmm. The practice of giving a tenth of income or property extends into the black nation of Israel's history before the time of the Mosaic Law. We see, and we can read this on your own, this is in Genesis 14, 17 through 20, Abraham presents Melchizedek right. with a tenth of booty from a conquered enemy. Mm. In the New Testament, the words tithe and tithing appear only eight times. And you see that in parentheses there. All of these passages refer back again to the Old Testament. This is going back. Everything in the New Testament basically is, is getting all of its ideas, everything from the Old Testament. Amen. Well, all right. Okay? <clears throat> the usage and to current Jewish passages. Nowhere does the New Testament expressly command Christians to tithe. Oh. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. as black Christian nationalists, and that's what we call ourselves inside of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church, black Christian nationalists, we are to be generous in sharing our material possessions with each other, mm -hmm. our black neighborhoods, communities, our church, and the black nation. The black Messiah Jesus is our model in giving. Mm -hmm. Giving is to be voluntary, willing, cheerful, and giving in the light of accountability to God. To God. Giving should be systematic and by no means limited to a tithe of our income. Some of us have more. We recognize that all we have is from God. I was just talking about that. I hope this is a good setup. Everything we got from is from God. Mm -hmm. And we're called to be faithful stewards of all our possessions. God gives you something to be faithful with. Take care of it. Nurture it. Think of it. Think of everything that you got as being something from God, not mine. So how do you handle it? How do you handle any assignment? How do you handle your job? How do you handle your relationships when you're giving these things from God? All, oh, everything comes from God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Now, I have a question there. How are black people investing our resources? Mm, so I'm going to go socioeconomic a little bit. Mm hmm so we do that. Um, Shrines of the Black Madonna, um, BCN teaches number seven. Um, spirituality encompasses everything. Like yeah. We don't have, so if you, it's your first time is visiting or listening, it's not like just that. You got church over here, and you got politics on this side, and then you got um, 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 economics over here, and then you got education over here. We believe in a, a from our ancestors, we're Africans. So all of this is encompassing. All of this right. is a part. Everything right. well, is, it is all the same. Yeah. Politics yeah. or just as important as philosophy as this Bible class. It is sacred. It is only God because God is in control of what? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Generally speaking, y'all can read from me that handout. Black people are still living for the moment. Well, with a to hell with the future mindset when it comes to money. My Lord. To hell with the future. Too many black folks tend to only worry about themselves. Uh oh. Yes, we do. We worry about it. And the money they have Amen. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to money. <laughs> Too many black folks tend to only worry about themselves and the money they have now. That way of thinking is crippling us and must stop. That's right. A common scenario for many black folks, when we get a huge chunk of money of their uh, tax refund deposit, is to run to the nearest appliance store, high end mall, car dealership. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, we just live in shiny rims. According to the state of work in America, black people spend 4% more money annually than any other race, despite the fact that they are the least represented, we are the least, least represented race, and that the race then lives in the highest poverty rate. Mm. Mm. It's tax season, so a lot of people waiting on the mailman. 
Mm-hmm. Can't wait. Oh, yeah. He yeah, goes on to say, if current economic trends continue, the average black household would need 228 years to accumulate as much wealth as their white counter- counterparts hold today. Mm, well, I For the average Latino family, it will take 84 years. Mm. Wow. Oh. Absent significant policy interventions, and you know what, that nut we got, that, that ain't gonna happen. Mm. Or systemic change in American economy, ain't nothing, we don't believe none of that's gonna happen, especially the old members, age. we don't believe nothing changed. Uh, the American economy, black people will never close the gap. This is from the Institute for Policy Studies, IPS, and the Corporation for Economic Development. Now, I can do this research on your own. Wow. Mm. 228 years, that's a mm. long time. Uh-huh. It goes on to say, according to Team Bob Muhammad of the Nation of Islam Research Organization, NOIRG, wasteful black spending is rooted in slavery. Mm, right. mm. Earlier this year, Minister Louis Farrakhan gave a speech on the root of black spending behaviors and what black people need to do to correct some of these bad habits. Well, mm-hmm. According to the research, 42 million blacks have a spending power amounting to $1.1 trillion. Mm. Oh, Lord. And this gives each black man, woman, and child an annual spending power of $26,200. Blacks spend their money overwhelmingly with white businesses. Talking about that, or we don't put our money back into our own community. Oh, yeah. On the following products. Mm. And I'm gonna move up. I read down some return on investment thing. <laughs> smoking, tobacco, $3.3 billion. Return on investment for smoking, lung cancer, heart disease, <laughs> COPD, emphysema, well, chronic bark. Bronchitis. Well, well, have mercy. And then I put a note in there because they didn't have it in there. What about the weed bill? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the weed, weed bill. bill. The weed bill. The weed bill. <laughs> and we got whiskey, wine, and beer, $3 billion. My Lord. Whiskey, wine, and beer, so we get turn on investment. Definitely change the mood and behavior changes. Mm-hmm. Dependence. Yeah. Blackouts. Mm-hmm. Possible DUIs. <laughs> Brain shrinkage. Oh, my Lord. Man. Oh, this is it. Just return on investment. You know, we're, we're throwing this money. How much was it? Billions. Not, not millions, but billions. billions. So, we, you know, when we're talking about where all that money, $1.1 $1. $1 trillion, it sounds like a whole lot, and it is. Yeah. Yet, we, we might as just burn it up. Yeah. yeah. We might as get some lighter food. I put all our money together, get some lighter food, put it on there, and fire up. Mm-hmm. Getting it back to the white man. Leisure right. spending. Now you know we're going to look good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, we got to keep the appearances. Got to have the do. Like, we spend more. And it doesn't matter. I love the black woman. It's the most beautiful creature on the planet. Like, it ain't even close. It ain't even second place. Yeah. The black woman. And we spend all this money on black hair products and cosmetics. And we don't own it. It says here. <laughs> We own about 10% of the business. At least we should be getting paid, right? We don't want to do my good. We should get paid for it. But it's other companies that do that. Mm-hmm. Give it to the we Koreans. keep the businesses. Come on, Come on brother. Teach, brother. We're experts at clubbing and party. Mm-hmm. I know 59. We went to be experts. experts. In the 70s, we were experts. Mm-hmm. I, I was in the 60s, but they were, they were experts then. We experts now. We can club and party. Yeah. Like we can love yeah. great party. We can we can we can, we can handle that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But building a black nation is something entirely well. different. Well. Toys, games, pets, an apartment complex. See, I see all kind of dog. Like what kind of dog is that? <laughs> so we're we are this what we're spending our money. Yeah. We buy a whole lot, we buy more gadgets than anybody. Yeah. For mm-hmm. my phone, we're gonna buy the gadgets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Telephones. Wow. 18.6 18. Wow. billion dollars. Get out of and, and, and I'm gonna move on from this. Gifts, $10 billion. Apple. Look, well, you know what? Black people are charitable. Yeah. We got something there. Look at that. 17. Point. We, we the poets, but we give back. <laughs> yeah. We give to charity. Hopefully it's our charity. We need to be giving uh, to ourselves, uh, all right? Uh, we yeah. can get it the United Way, and I know all that's good, but we need to. We need to 
come up with our own charitable contributions. Like being the strongest of the black man, we got a whole our communities. We got to redirect this money. Yeah. Amen. 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 The NORG theorizes that when most black people emerged from slavery, it frightened the hell out of white people. Mm. Frightened the hell out of them. Mm. They knew that money and knowledge and black hands meant that black people would have the power to determine their own <coughs> destiny apart from white domination and control. That's right. Mm. The first impulse blacks had after slavery was to get as far away from white people as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they even set up 60 all black towns in which they managed free of white authority. We hear some of the lessons behind that They're in Oklahoma and other places. This trend had to be stopped because with black independence came the total loss of the labor that whites totally depended on. Totally. Mm -hmm. well. This created a tremendous amount of oppression. Mm -hmm. Blacks responded to this oppression by becoming spenders. Wow. Mm -hmm. I hit my screen, so I gotta go back. Take a time. So, the girls on the stage today, many blacks don't trust banks or the courts. Blacks trust only that which they can hold in their hands at that very moment. Well. As destructive as that behavior is to black progress, it is exactly how profitable that behavior is to whites. So we've always seen the information to this. And most of this we already know, but it's why we reiterate this because we got to change this. Yeah, that's and right. We, it, this, this is a mentality. Mm. We've got, we, we should be on top. We, we can do it overnight. Mm. Like, uh, the whole world would be just, uh, black people change overnight, but if we can't change our mind, so the same thing keeps going on right. and right. on. Yeah. All this yeah. is, is a change in our mentality. Well, well. amen. Then, the church. Well, Lord, okay. <laughs> have mercy. The loyalty, the loyalty, <laughs> and I didn't put that in there because it just it was, it was in there enough space. The loyalty blacks have for, to their church also has proven costly. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Said mm -hmm. officials at the Faith Communities today, mm -hmm. a non-profit based in Hartford, Connecticut. A 2013 study revealed that black churches have collected, check this out, more than $420 billion, mm -hmm. $420 billion in tithes and donations nationwide since 1980. Uh -huh. An average of $252 million a week. Mm. What people fail to see and understand is that the church pastors aren't waiting for miracles to fund their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They don't have to pray day in and day out to make their ends meet, mm -hmm. said Northwest resident and author Byron Woodward. <laughs> <laughs> they are getting rich off of God. Yeah. Not from God, he said. Uh -huh. Not from God, but off God. Well, Willard, right. whose books include the 2011 Pawn Queen, noted that the money spent tithing, check this out, could yeah. buy as many as 93,333 homes well. valued, it's 93,333 homes valued at $150,000. Wow. Mm, well. Pay for tuition for up to up to $15,000 a year for 933, 33,000 college students mm. and feed every homeless American wow. for one year. Mm. It is the best hustle on the planet. Mm. Like, if you don't get it here on earth, you get it when you die and go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no hustle. And we'll say it, it just so happens that not one person it, it, he knows all of it, I know all of it. The history of this planet has died and went to heaven and came back and tell us it, it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that would be helpful if somebody came back and said, don't worry about it, it's a veil of tears. Just go and live your life. Don't, don't worry about being poor, don't worry about being broke. It's going to be all right in the by and by. Well, that would be like, you know, somebody came up. And then you hear you like, oh, I ain't going to say nothing, right? I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to wait until Saturday. That's right. My Lord. 
Uh, awesome. You come the good part. In the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church, Amen. we know that only, I put that in big letters, only the total transformation of the black man's mind, and that's the black woman as well, can end black oppression. Well, amen. All the things we just talked about, it's, it's, it's just a mindset. It ain't got nothing to do with us being poor. That's right. Right? It's our mindset, what we spend in our what we, we invest in our money in. Right? Well, yeah. Like we want to invest in ourselves, we invest in the white man, we invest right. in the junk. Yeah. We can't, can't nobody tell us nothing. Right. Right? Yeah. Black people cuss you out. You, 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 you know, I go to the right thing, and people think I'm crazy by preaching that. Mm. Y'all might think I'm crazy in the audience too. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my job. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, speak the truth, brother. Yeah, it, it speak goes on to say we must admit and confront the niggerization. My lord. For the new people to hear that word niggerization, that's a that's a hard word. And so the older members, we, we, we were brought up on this stuff. Niggerization. That means that our minds have been conditioned to where we act and think. Like we just said, how the white man wants us to think, even though we don't think we're acting like we're the white man. Well, well, obviously, our buying, we ain't gonna say that. Well, but our buying and how we're living, we can't even invest in our own sales. Well, right. yeah. Like, and we got the money, it would be different if we didn't have no research. We well, got come on, brother. Right? Come on. Right. Come on, brother. Let's dig around. Let's dig around. We can't get along. Everybody said, black people need to get along. Everybody said, everybody's gonna say, hey, man, black people can't get along. You know, black people can't get along. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do we trust black doctors? We'd rather have a white doctor. Mm -hmm. oh, come on. Black doctor might not be that good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got white man and black man. Yeah. They're yeah. the black woman either. Who you trust? Well. Whose side you want? But, and, and, and I'm not making fun because we all go through that. Nobody, and, and being in the shrines of black, we are conditioned with this too. We've been in the church. We've been here a long time. So in 40 years, right. we still consider ourselves niggerized because we have to break this. And we live in this enemy system. We call this planet an enemy system because it's institutions that control. We don't control the means of survival. Well. We, don't call, we don't control the judicial system, food. If somebody throw something about my cabinet, oh, nothing. Not really. We're consumers. Well, We're consumers. 100%. Mm. Right. So we've got to break this condition of uh, uh, this conditioned like mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. We will never free ourselves from oppression until each black person is willing to commit himself to self-transformation. Well. Right. Rejecting his niggerized mind. First you gotta know that you got it, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're coming inside of the church, we 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 mirror back. Like we work we operating in groups. This is all out of love. And we love black people. Some of my students are in here. Know this, right? These people that are around you, I might be the least of them in terms of what I was teaching inside of that classroom. Everything I learned come from here. Well. Well. Oh, yeah. All right, brother. Come on, brother. And it's acceptance of the Declaration of Black Inferiority. All black people need a transforming community with a process for self-transformation in which they can be changed. Mm -hmm, That's right. Mm -hmm. Cannot do this, this change by yourself. No. Well. Like you need other people that, that love you. And basically it's, it's just to show you boundaries. Right? Hey, my brother, my sister, I love you. That might maybe not be the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. right? right? It's to encourage you when you need encouragement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get into that self-pity Oh, I ain't doing it. My life falling apart. I ain't no good. I'm unworthy. And we, we're there to encourage you. We are there to uplift you. Like, no, nah, no, nah, you ain't get into that mindset. You're going to have to pick it up. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right, brother. All right, brother. And we correct you. We correct you out of love. That's this process, right. we correct you out of love. Because we're trying to change our mind. This is our problem. This thing between our, our, our here. Right, you're right. Amen. And we've been conditioned yeah, right. since childbirth. That's right. Since Amen. childbirth, continuously, Amen. the media, Amen. everything that we see, our children are bombarded with it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well. Amen. The conditioned self. Mm -hmm. Socialization is the basis of change and is the acceptance of behavioral norms 
implicit in acceptance of the covenant. We believe in the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Bible, mm -hmm. which is that God will be our God and we will be our people. There are conditions with that in which we have to follow the law. <clears throat> we live by our code. Now, it's not a written code anymore, but it's a code inside of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Some of us, this is code like, we just definitely got to respect black people. Even if black people don't respect us, we still That's respect right. black people. Right. Mm -hmm. We know what we've been through. We, see, we, we know about the niggerization how process, so we don't have an excuse to disrespect somebody because they disrespected us. We just have to love on them and wait. Remember what we were at one time. Yeah, yeah. All right, brother. Come on. The code expresses the basic demands of communalism. We're communal people inside of the church. That means the emphasis is on the group more than our own individual wants. I am because we are. Amen. That's how I say it. Y'all say that back to me. I am because we are. If something is wrong with Michelle, if something is wrong with me, I'm hurt. Why do I should be? If I'm, if I'm identified, I, I, can't, I can't live good and see black people living like hell. That's right. Well, That's right, bro. Mm. Yeah. So I'm moved by the Holy Spirit. I'm moved by God to do something. That I'm going to be the one to stand up. That's what happened with God. But he stood up. Mm -hmm. right. If you feel like that, that's God trying to break through. Well, And it's hard. Because oh, individually, it's not that everything that we learn is say, do for yourself, do for yourself, self, 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 self. Right, right. right. That's right. You're right, brother. The groups help us to love and have concern for one another. Helps us define boundaries again. And the boundaries of the slave culture, that's the dead world. Well, we call it the slave culture. Well, we seek to be just like the disciples in the book of Acts, that's 240 through 42 through 47, where they sold, when they came together, this group after Jesus' death, they basically lived communally. Everybody shared with their possessions with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, they sold their possessions. Mm -hmm. I'm saying well, this, this is something we're, this, this, this is what we are trying to get to. We're not there. And by the way, all the stuff I'm saying about the shrines of the black Madonna, this is not a utopia. Mm -hmm. that, I don't want to get that mixed up. It's not a utopia. Mm -hmm. But we're in the process, that's why we use the process of becoming these things. That's right. Well, our investments, we must learn to invest in our own black selves. Now, the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church, if you didn't know, we, we own over 3,500 um, acres of farmland, mm -hmm. which gives us the means to produce, <laughs> process, the means now. The means. I'm just saying the means. <laughs> <laughs> to produce, process, <coughs> possibilities to transport and distribute food into the black community. Well, this is a glorious place if you ever went there. Um, we, we could do anything with this land. The possibilities are limitless. Mm -hmm. But we've got to have laborers. We've got to have bodies. We've got to have more than a few people that are there. So we reach out and ask you to become a part of this community. Or at least give it an opportunity to look at it. Mm -hmm. Cultural centers, which help us to build a positive black identity by, main, our, our, by maintaining our connection to our African heritage and our culture. We can provide a forum for the creative black artists to display their talents in the black community. We have an on-site historian. You don't know something about black history. You make me go and see this man over here. That's our own Wallamu opportunity. Free! Remember how God you free stuff? Free! Definitely you're gonna get in more house than any black college. Uh, well. But you're gonna get this history lessons here every Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh -huh. Every Saturday. For free. We have a Western <laughs> Learning Center, which provides programs designed to nurture and develop young black minds That's right. to be skilled and intelligent. Our children are the future. Our children are the future. So I've just been giving the signal. <laughs> That's my Bible class, Chris. <laughs> 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 